Oh, you mean you're like Raffi or something? Yeah. Mm. Now it's kooky funny, and this is the fart song. It's called mm-hmm. Clean Up Your Room. I'm cleaning up my room and do-do-do. Like, it's a torture. Oh, my God. What the fuck are you wearing? What? Did you What's just the... work out with Lululemon's daughter? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I did just work out. Like, you know, you catch me, like, at 3 a.m. when I'm about ready to go to bed, and I put a shirt on for you anyway. And I was just, yeah, I just came back from the gym, so sorry about that. It's 5 p.m. It's your supper. <laughs> I know, I know. What time is it? Oh, God, fuck, it is 4, 4 o'clock. Late start today. I was out late last night. How what, are you? What were you doing? Fornicating? I was fornicating. I was fornicating with large African gentlemen, and it was absolutely deplorable and disgusting. Wow. <laughs> and I'm, and I'm definitely, going to help. definitely going to help. I got a pinky in my asshole in 1999, and uh-huh. every time I go to the bathroom, it looks like someone was murdered there. <laughs> wow, really? And then just from that pinky? Just a little... <laughs> and the drugs and really? alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I think what happens with alcohol is you dehydrate yourself so much that when you finally have a turd, it's a football. <laughs> <laughs> I would have it's like a junkie those, shit. like heroin enemas would have done it for you. Heroin enemas, that sounds pleasant. Not that heroin yes. needs any help feeling wonderful. Is it um, good? I've never done it. Do you like heroin? Yes, it's fantastic. It's good, is it? Yeah. I don't really do like poor people drugs, so I've never tried that, and I've never tried um, weed. Well, I, I don't like weed. I think it's awful. Um, I, I only do drugs that you'd find at nice middle class dinner parties. Well, like ecstasy and cocaine. <laughs> well, I, I mean um, that, or things that would be in a you know in a disreputable gay nightclub, because you can't actually you you can't judge us. And identity politics from the left is gonna is getting to the stage where you can't you you soon won't even be able to arrest people for anything they do that is a re- direct result of the sexuality they had no control over. So I'm gonna be able to topple out of a nightclub, you know, sort of Monday afternoon, um, you know, two p.m. off my face on ketamine and cocaine. They won't even be allowed to arrest me because it'll be a hate crime. This, wow. is what I'm, this is what I'm aiming for, actually. I'm going to throw. I've, I've realized as I've got into my 30s that you know the progressive left are actually our friends. Um, well, you you have a force field around you. I mean, even right now, you're being snobby about the fact that you do cat tranquilizer. <laughs> <laughs> it's not cat tranquilizer. It's, it's horse, horse tranquilizer. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Just, 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 I only just, do horse tranquilizer. I don't do the drugs that peons like Keith Richards do. <laughs> let's just get this completely straight. It's for horses. Um, you know, and there's there's some um, there's a great T-shirt. You must have seen it, like a big stallion on it. You know, if it's good enough for Mr. Red or something. Yeah, and what's what's amyl nitrate? That's just like ammonia, isn't it? I don't do that because I don't need it anymore. But um, it's it's this little it's this little thing that you sniff that relaxes your muscles, so you can fill in the gaps yourself. I think I know that this is a family show now because you're broadcasting during the day, so I won't go into any more detail than that. Yeah, thank you. We we were just watching Vince Neil's uh, cock going in and out of a <laughs> vagina, but it is. Oh, you were. Oh, okay. Still well, a fam- Still a fa- That's a f- heterosexual couple, very Aryan looking too. It was inspiring. Then, then it's fine. That's safe. That's safe. You don't want to hear about homosexuality at this time of the day. Correct. Or any time of the day, really. I mean, I don't know why you put up with me at all. Well, it's weird. <laughs> I mean, it's like a vegetarian lion. You have fangs, you're meant to eat meat, and then you go, no thanks, I'll put it in the bum. I know, um, no, I know, we're broken. We're broken and damaged. What did you actually want to talk about today? Now, you recently wrote an article about how wonderful you are and how incredibly popular you are. That doesn't sound very really likely, I know, but I did. And uh, I think it's very interesting because you're, you're right, you are wildly popular, and I've, I, we did that Google Hangouts once, and there was about seven dudes there all licking your ass, and only maybe one or two were gay. And I think there's this glut of worship going on. Because in the 50s and 60s, we had Rock Hudson, ironically, who was in the closet, but all these stars we could look up to. And now, to be an alpha male and to be pompous and arrogant is seen as a sin. But because you're a fag, fag. Mm. you... You, you are a guilt-free god, and now <laughs> people are, like, catching up on all their worshipping. Do you know what? I think that's it. I think that I'm the, um, I'm the self-important, irritatingly ta- talented, kind of arrogant asshole it's okay to like. And the only other people in culture that we're allowed to do this with are women and blacks. So you can do it with Madonna, you can do it with Kanye, but you can't do it with straight white men. Because there's something, you know, the progressive left has told us there's something, you know, about this sort of privilege structure. So there's nothing really very attractive goes the thinking about a straight white man who presume, who is supposed supposed to have all the advantages in life 
um, crowing about how great he is. But you can do it if you're a member of a minority. But um, Trump seems to be an exception to that rule. Maybe because he's so rich, he just said, you know what, think, I'm going to try being a cad. Because of the money. Um, I think the money and I think a certain I don't know what it is about him. That's well, it's not like no one fought him. back. I mean, people were fucking furious at him for being proud of himself. But you know what? It, do you know that's why people like him and why he's so unique and why people like me admire him so much is that he does all the stuff we do and he doesn't even need to play up the, the minority thing to get away with it. I, I, I guess it's money. I think it's money. I think. I, and you know why? I think it's because it, it bestows the same kind of invulnerability on you as minority status does, because people know that they the basis of social justice, right? The basis of the left is coming for you to try and destroy your reputation, destroy your career, make you lose your job, make you lose your friends. You can't touch a billionaire. Right. And billionaires aren't supposed to talk like he talks. And when they do. You have nothing to come at them with because he already is like, you know, the living embodiment of an Internet comment section. He's phenomenally funny and bitchy and plain spoken. Um, you know, when there was something about um, one of his speeches last week, I think, and somebody was complaining about food stamps and he has him removed. And he's like, oh, I start talking about food stamps and the, and the hugely fat guy objects. Mm. You know, it's just like politicians aren't supposed to do that. And he, you know, he's not, um, he's invulnerable to the normal uh, journalistic method because he's got this invulnerability that we're only used to seeing uh, elsewhere in minorities. Well, he's also a New Yorker, so he's used to fighting. And I think a lot of the media are from shitty cities like D.C. where they they just go boo and then you run away crying. But like when he was he was getting in shit for saying the word anchor baby, he goes, well, what do you want to call it? And they say, how about uh, American born son of undocumented workers? And he goes, that takes too long. I'm saying anchor baby. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. And, and that's a very New York thing. And you sometimes see a little hint of this in pop stars. You know, like Mariah Carey, kind of, you can take the girl out of Long Island, but you can't entirely take Long Island out of Mariah Carey. Um, and, you know, every once in a while, you know when she sort of throws a bit of shade? Or, um, uh, actually, everyone here is straight, so we're not familiar with Mariah Carey's day-to-day. -day. Well, you must have wanted to fuck her in the 90s, at least. Oh, I'd love to fuck her now, a week too. after she dies. <laughs> 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 We'd like to get in a time machine and fuck her as a baby. <laughs> this is the closest thing there is to blasphemy for a homosexual. You understand this, what you just said. That's oh, really the awful. idea of me fucking like, you know this, Mariah you know this, Carey like, and Madonna. Like, I'm fucking like, them in their vagina. It's like in the yeah. Bible. It's like, um, and I'm in love with them, and I'm going to call God them the next God day. God that must drive you God nuts. forgive everything except the sin against the Holy Ghost. And, and Jesus never says what the sin against the Holy Ghost is. Well, I think you just found it. I Nick Cannon ate it. out Mariah Carey. La, la, la. His face was in her vagina. La, 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 la. She went, oh, God. And then she came thinking about how much she loves him because they were married in a heterosexual legal marriage. Oh, <laughs> I love you, Nick. <laughs> You're the worst person in the world. Um, I, I loved, you know, she's she's been sullied now because that ama the amazing kind of like... Um, uh, battle with Eminem, where he released uh, bagpipes from Baghdad about like kind of hinting uh, at what he'd done to her, and then she did that um, obsessed where she dresses up in drag as him, like with a little goatee, and then he releases the warning where he basically says that he nutted early on a on a belly, um, and it's like I can carry on, bitch, if you want me to, but you don't want me to, and then and then all of a sudden it was all over. <laughs> don't fuck um, with Eminem. None you know, none of us so, here have ever fucked with Eminem in any way, shape, or form. I mean, you might. We can't handle it. It might be Mariah Carey, but even you cannot handle Eminem. If no way. If he's, got, if he's got something on you, that's I, just it. And this, Eminem does what I do, does what Trump does, does what Coulter does, does what you do, in a, in a sense. It's that sort of, like, you just take no prisoners, no hold barred, no taboo, debase yourself before other people get the opportunity to. I've seen the pictures of you on the internet. Um, you know, there's nothing, make it so that, you know, there's literally nothing out there that anybody could say that is anything approaching what you've said about already said about yourself, um, you know, because this is the great this is the great drag queen thing. This is why gays are quite good at this actually, and and I know that you as a sort of as a very very camp um, straight man have take, have taken cues from this. Um, you know, this is the drag queen thing. Like, read yourself before you read anybody else. Once you started laughing at you, you can do what the hell you want to everybody else. And this is what some of us on the sort of cultural libertarian firebrand right get get correct. Um, and Eminem is, I think, a fellow traveler in that. Well, I noticed this weekend you and Lauren Southern raised 41000 last time I checked. 50, I think. And prior to, to that, I raised like 200 grand for a, a feminist filmmaker who'd gone and met the men's rights movement and... Um, uh, and suddenly just and she'd taken the red pill as they like to say uh, suddenly discovered that feminism was horse shit um what's really interesting about me at the moment is I've, <laughs> i 
<laughs> I thought you'd appreciate that intro. Uh, what's interesting about me at the moment, uh, what's interesting about the Milo project is um, I have this you know, fun, sassy, social justice proof persona, which is great and it's fun and I write about stuff and everybody reads it and you know the people who hate me read the most. You know, I'm probably the most hate-read journalist on the internet, which is great. But what's really interesting, what's culturally interesting about me is I seem to occupy this space like as a node between all of the different dissident alternative subcultures that are exciting on the internet. And it's not just gamers with game again, but you know, like a huge portion of my fans are bodybuilders and they all hate feminists too. Um, you know, like there's, there's rappers, believe it or not. Um, there's actors in Hollywood who don't want to say it publicly, but who DM me all the time. Authors, you know, you've got the alt-right, you've got it's so many different internet subcultures and there isn't really anybody else in culture that speaks to all of them. And I have like a couple of good contacts in all of them and those good contacts then know everyone. So the, the sort of reach and power that I have um, when I decide that, you know, something has gone wrong and I need to sort of correct a great injustice in the world is really, really significant. So that was the piece you were referring to. It's basically what that was about. Um, and, and so it was it was on, this, on the face of it was about me, but it was really uh, a little sort of investigation into the sort of analyzing the architecture of, of the dissident internet. And it's the fun internet. It's the internet that likes you. It's the internet that likes me. It's the internet that, you know, that, that loves Trump. Um, they're all the good people online. You see what the progressive left has done for years is exclude people one by one. It's thrown out men. It's thrown out white people, you know, these big groups, but it's also thrown out little groups. Um, and now the progressive left is coming for gays, by the way. Uh, this is something some people don't realize that you'll see in Slate and Sal on magazines like this, where they say, you know, our, our expressing a racial preference on Grindr is racist. Oh, really? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so they're coming so for you, gays. Not only do you have to not hate blacks, you have to suck their cocks. No, you, lit you literally, literally have to fuck black dudes, otherwise you're racist. Now, for me, fortunately, not a problem. Um, it's another reason why I'm, you know, social justice proof of these buggers, but guys, but you know what? Like in that moustache, you don't get to do that. OK, you don't get to do that in that. All fucking right. Moustache. So just stop it. Um, but uh, yeah, um, it, it's a really interesting moment now because the left has, has thrown people out of its club um, gradually over the last sort of 30 years. And now what's happened is that the people outside the club are more numerous than the people inside the club. There are more of us than there are of them. And sort of these countercultural, uh, mischievous cultural libertarian figures like you and me are speaking to gigantic audiences who are desperate to hear somebody tell them, no, you're not a racist, you're not a sexist, of course you're not. Um, they've been told that by politicians, by the academy, by the media for a decade, and people are sick of it. And it's one of the reasons, and, and you know what's, what's also great about it, um, is not only are people waking up, but students are waking up too. You will hear all this stuff about Mizu and Black Lives Matter and all the rest of it because these loud, gobby, small numbers of people on university campuses take all the spotlight and make all of the news. But I get emails from campuses all across uh, Europe and America and, and further afield all day. I get dozens of these things. People saying, please come and speak. The majority of us do not follow these guys. They're mental. They're crazy. They're bringing our, they're bringing our community into disrepute. Like, we don't believe this nonsense. So, I'm, you know, I'm just starting this... Um, what I call the dangerous faggot tour, um, which is this huge, like, sort of UK, US university tour over the coming 12 months where I just go and start dropping truth bombs. And, you know, um, it's amazing and very heartening when you suddenly realize actually most people are pretty sensible. And you may not agree on everything. You may not agree on, you know, nuclear weapons or taxation or whatever. But the it, it sort of restored my faith in humanity a little bit, that people believe in the importance of not just of free speech, but of offensive speech. And so the people who piss everybody off and wind everybody up, like you and like me, like Trump, um, it's our time now. And people will support us and they don't agree with anything we believe in just because they know we're essential to have around. And I think that's very exciting. Yeah, well, I, we saw that this weekend. You raised 50 grand for this guy who all he did was make fun of feminists and he's been in in court for three years he spent a hundred grand and he's looking at jail time and what what fascinated me was the daily coast today with a woman talk about a lack of self-awareness her name is idle dilettante which is oh, exactly this is, this what is she is margaret pless but she's so stupid she spelled her own twitter name wrong she spelled, <laughs> she spelled dilettante wrong yeah like, well, you know, well her articles are rife with typos and i've noticed that with daily coast and female writers uh, in it's general not, they always get they, names they, wrong they, and they always get their grammar they, fucked up but she goes um uh, a guy stalking feminist just got paid 50 grand <laughs> and you go i don't understand how your brain works that's half of his lawyer fees yeah, meet the guy who earned 40K <laughs> in legal fund donations. But then when you read the article, you realize she actually has her facts right. He, she, They were never under duress. He never yeah. went to where they were. And it was just tweets. But in her crazy brain, that's enough. 
for jail time and a hundred grand and three years in court. There's three things to say about that. One, the Daily Course um, publishes pretty much everything, so it, she's probably she's not a staffer there. She just let she's just allowed to blog there. Two, this woman actually the reason she wrote that is because she sort of is is slightly obsessed with me, and she basically writes about everything I do because she says that um, if if Milo likes something, that's a good indication that it's bad. So I replied to her on Twitter with, "I hate everything you're doing. Please stop giving me attention. Please stop writing about me." And I hope that she will continue to be. Well, that also makes her racist because you love black cocks. I think does it make it? I think it makes her racist. Because now she must hate black cocks. Right? I think it makes her homophobic for sure. Yeah, I think so. What um, was three? Uh, but the, the the hilarious thing about these posts is that they can't. They have to sort of acknowledge how ridiculous they're being because they've observed. Sort of you know, they they can't tell the story without admitting how ludicrous it is. And this is something that this this person in particular does over and over again. And the great thing about this this post is like she basically admitted that the Canadian system is so fucked up. That not just, you know, this isn't just activists or some runaway government commission like the Human Rights Commission that took Ezra Levant, um, you know, tried to take him to the cleaners because he published uh, Islamic cartoons, this Islamic cartoons rather. Um, this uh, this is the government, this is the crown. And this case is really interesting because um, Canada is so far down the, um, the crazy train r- route that um, the police were in cahoots with these feminists who are trying to get somebody put in prison just for being rude to them on the internet. One of these feminists gives talks for the police. Like she um, does seminars about how the police can like control speech and social media. This is how far, like how bad Canada has got. And this guy now is not the subject of like an investigation by some human rights tribunal or whatever. He is in a criminal trial and faces like um, a prison sentence. He's lost his home. He's lost his livelihood. And the post that she wrote, um, again, revealed another another fact about this about this case, which is this guy's life has been completely destroyed because he said something bad about feminists on the internet and she has to acknowledge this in order to tell her story but she doesn't really you know she doesn't really explain it the thing about this this guy you know he's been told by a canadian court for like he hasn't been able to have access to the internet or anything internet connected for three years i'd rather be in prison i mean you get fed, <laughs> you get fed well, we know you'd like to be in prison well, I was going to say, you get fed, you get washed, you get a nice black boyfriend, what's not to love? Um, but, uh, you know, I, I'd rather be in jail than have no internet for three years. I mean, my, these are the same people who are telling us that the internet is a human right. You know, um, you know, these sort of silly lefties are saying, you know, we should take the internet away from people because they, because they use their right to free speech. And let's remember, free speech is what drove every progressive revolution in history. Gay rights, women's rights, the civil rights movement with Martin Luther King. What pushed that stuff for, you know, Martin Luther, Martin Luther King is misremembered as the guy who won this for blacks, but it wasn't him, it was Malcolm X because everyone was so fucking terrified. Um, you know, rude speech um, is what drives progressive progress forward. And now that they've that now they've colonized the academy, the establishment, the media, politics, everywhere, um, they've forgotten that. They've forgotten what got them there in the first place and started denying it to their ideological opponents. And this is why I always say about the left, when the left gets into power, how they start to behave is so interesting. You know, conservatives get this wrong sometimes too, but there's at least a healthy 50-50 split between, you know, old religious right establishment, social conservative um, kind of uh, Republicans, and libertarian right, classical liberal, cultural libertarian, JS Mill sort of free speech, uh, you know that's the bit, that's the big fault line on the right, but they're happy to coexist together. The left seems to have no place in it anymore for anyone who believes in free speech. And for those of us who, who understand that free speech is what keeps us safe from violence, the fact that we can talk is why we're not shooting each other. And in those countries where you can't talk, people shoot each other. Um, you know the the fact that the left has forgotten that free speech is what protects minorities from violence um, is so amazing and so intellectually bankrupt, so historically ignorant. That that's uh, that I think is why they are now starting to lose, and they're losing the argument in the public square. They're losing the argument in, on on campuses too, by the way, because even though people are very silent about this, they agree with us. Look at the, something that was posted by Jonathan Haidt today, um, uh, saying that the Yale problem actually starts at high school. He went into a high school and he asked these kids. He said. Um, uh, who want, who on campus wants to have like an open, tolerant atmosphere where everybody can um, speak their mind? And everyone said, yeah, sure. Uh, so he said, OK, out of the women here, who feels uh, able to speak up about gender issues? All of them. Out of the men here, who feels uh, able to speak up about gender issues? Almost none of them. Same for race. Same for politics uh, as well, by the way. Um, you know, the, 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 out of 60 kids, only six of them identify, identified themselves as Republican. And only one of those said that he was happy to speak about politics in public. And even then, he said he's only doing it to wind people up. So Jonathan Haidt then turns around to them and says, okay, so you want the kind of open 
place to discuss things where nobody feels scared. But that's precisely what you've created. You've created an environment in which people are scared to talk because of their skin color, sexuality, um, politics, almost everything. What are you going to do about it? And, that's, uh, and that, that's, a, that's the weird situation because actually the people who do want to speak up and have interesting things to say and want to have these debates are in the majority. It's just the gobby minority. So, um, but I, It's I, a shrill minority with a lot of power, but they showed us a weak scale on the dragon, and that is we don't criticize minorities or gays, and then we have a black fucking gay that uh, is you. And I thought we, when we threw you at the dragon, it was just like a, a nice little arrow, but you've turned into a javelin that has impaled itself on the dragon. And well, now, working, if you can just pry open this. that wound, I think we can all sort of walk into this sort of cunt-shaped hole you made in this. <laughs> you, can, you can all bring up the rear, fine. Um, yeah, but you, know, <laughs> but, you, but you know what is so fascinating, so interesting. Um, the, the, the left is moving ever more distant from the public. That's why they're closing all the comment sections. You know, CNN, the Daily Beast, they're all closing the comment sections because they, they're moving so far away from the public that every time they publish anything, they get you know widespread ridicule and criticism. And they misrepresent ridicule and criticism as abuse and harassment, which is the great, you know, the, these are the great buzzwords of our era, um, basically meaningless. Um, and what's so fascinating about this is, you know, they're moving, e they're moving ever, ever more distant to the rest of the population and people are getting so angry about it. They're getting so pissed. Um, they're desperate for outlets. They're looking for heroes. And, uh, you know, I think that there, there are respectable establishment thinkers in the cultural libertarian movement, people like Christina Hoff Summers um, from the American Enterprise Institute. And then there's a sort of vanguard shock troop hellraiser like you and me. Um, and working in, in symbiosis. Um, you know, working working together with the most powerful, most interesting, most effective, most fascinating, sexiest. Also, well, so much better looking than them. Oh my God, so much yeah. better looking. You know, whoever really wanted to throw their hat in the ring with these dowdy, fat, lesbianic, you know. Uh, imagine the head. imagine Maureen Dowd's vagina. Arm armpit head, fucking social oh. justice war. You know, feminist lesbians. Whoever wanted to do that when you could, like Lauren Southern, you, me. I mean, come on. Oh God, um, I've know, got a boner like, right I would now. Fuck all of us. Uh, you know, um, so obviously that helps too. But you know what? We're winning. We are the most interesting, most exciting, most powerful cultural force in the West at the moment. We are the one that everybody's watching. And, and also, don't underestimate the reach and influence and power that we have just because most people, by virtue of, the, of how dangerous it is being able to speak your mind in the workplace now, how dangerous it is you know, saying anything in public, won't be able to, for example, subscribe to you on YouTube or subscribe to me on Twitter. But what's interesting is when you look into the numbers, and this is what this post was about, what, um, called Why I'm Winning, that, that you referred to earlier. You should look it up on Breitbart, it's really good. Um, I, and I showed that, you know, I've only just tipped over 100,000 um, followers on Twitter, um, but I had 3.4 million profile views in the last 28 days. 3.4 million people went to twitter.com slash Nero. 3.4 million. This is, an, you know, this is, these, are the, these are the people, these are the silent majority who can't publicly sign up to this stuff, who can't publicly say, I agree with him. You know, I mean, he's a, he's a like gobby little shit, but um, he's right. These are, the, these are the people who are sitting at home and they're saying, thank you. Thank you for this. And I, they email me all the time. They say, look, I can't do anything in public. Obviously, I'll lose my job. You know, my wife will hate me, but thank you. And it's not just my wife will hate me. I get emails from, uh, you know, from blacks, from gays, from women. My, my, you know, so many of my fans are women. And, I, you know, my, I'm known mostly for, for railing against feminism. And so many of my fans are women. It's extraordinary because they recognize the damage that these awful people are doing to the relationship between the sexes. So, you know, I, I, would, I would just, you know, say... You should keep doing what you're doing too, because although I am now much more famous than you, um, and have a much bigger, you know, sort of audience than you, um, you're still really important. So keep it up. You have twice as many Twitter followers as me, but if we walk out on the streets, I would definitely have more people asking me for a photograph. Well, of course, because you know you've spent twenty years more getting famous. To the position. Well, you you spent twenty years getting to the position it's taken me eighteen months to get into. So um, you've got like more people who recognize your face, if you know what I mean. So yeah, yeah probably. you're a big fish in a small pond, but and I'm a big fish <laughs> in the ocean. But yeah, soon I love you'll be you're swimming my, in the ocean with the big guys. Uh, person to tease. Nero, thank you for coming on the show. It's not a fashionable time to be a fighter, but it's a crucial time. And you're right, you are winning. We are, we are winning, and we're going to make it. Thanks, Thanks so more much, than a yeah. friend. Always good to see you. Bye. Bye. Uh, Rad, I need you to transcribe that, okay? I assume you were doing it live. Was he applying for a job? Because he's, he's hired. <laughs> I like that he's dressed like Bret Hart.
Yeah. Admitted he liked cocaine, and then he proved it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we want to do. We want to try to break the world record for video podcast. And I, I'm realizing now. I'm just going to ask him a question, and then hit the couch, <laughs> and get a good couple hours in, and then come back. Hey, I couldn't agree more. <laughs> uh, no, I love Nero, and, and he is a crucial tool in this because he's gay, and no one can criticize him. Speaking <laughs> of straights, man greats. Christmas is right around the corner, and if your father is a man of exquisite taste, there is no finer gift than the ultimate steakhouse experience that happens right at home. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only 100% cast iron man grate is the perfect gift for any meat-eating man. Because, here's the truth about Christmas presents, we tend to hate most of the crap we get. Sweaters, jewelry, love coupons. Crap like that is not what we want. We want stuff we can actually use. And as most men will tell you, we actually enjoy cooking on the grill. It's awesome. It's our domain. We own the grill. And Mangrate turns any grill into a top-of-the-line grilling system. <laughs> Mangrate ensures juicy, tender meat with no flare-ups and perfect sear marks every time. Mangrate's patented design delivers steakhouse quality flavor right at home. Don't cook up a great cut of meat on something that looks like a bunch of shirt hangers. No! Use the system that ensures great steaks every time. The man grate. Order now and get 45% off all cast iron grates and premium brushes at mangrate.com. Just enter the coupon code KUMIA45%. That's KUMIA45 and the percent sign. And you'll get 45% off all grates and brushes. Tons of other new items are available now to enhance your grilling experience. So if you have a man grate, check out the enhancements. And if you or someone on your list does not have a man grate, then here's his Christmas present. Use coupon code KUMIA45% at mangrate.com. I just had a fucking brilliant idea. It's also the name of uh, Nero's movement, right? Man grate? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's spelled differently. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> G-R-E-A-T. Uh, you know what I'm going to do when I have a super normie guest? I'm going to do a read that's like an hour. <laughs> and then film them going, <laughs> fuck it. I'm just going to go. And and, and and as soon as they start getting up, be like, hold on. And because now, 45% off, if you dial now, oh, hold, on, hold on, we will be getting, and just keep going and going and going. <laughs> yeah, we won't be live, because we won't bore the viewers, but we could film that and save it as a fun little bit. All right. Uh, Mike David, is that you? Ah, man, great. Love those guys. They are great. I can't, I can't believe I have to uh, follow a man, great commercial. What are you, Adam Carolla? <laughs> no, I'm Guy with Bill Zola. I, I understand. <laughs> it's very cute. Uh, hey, thank you so much for having me because we've got a lot of work to do exposing this Fagoot, Jamie Kilstein. Are you guys familiar with Jamie? I've got uh, two Jays here who do a show called Cheap Shots on East Village Radio. And, of course, yeah, Mike absolutely. Ward down from Canada, a guy who's, by the way, we've been talking about free speech all, all day. He's facing 100 grand in uh, legal fees because he talked about a little kid on the Make-A-Wish Foundation who he couldn't help but notice still hasn't died. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a uh, hundred grand to notice that. Yeah, it seems a little high. Now make a wish. You're supposed to die, right? They should die. <laughs> they should though. That's the deal. That's you, the this thing. is your. La they don't want to call it the last yeah. wish. That's depressing. So they go make a wish. But what if you're like Adam Sandler and funny people, and you just miraculously get better? Well, then we you need our wish. Your back. wish back. Oh, uh, your wish. You, uh, we've sent you to Disney World. Give me four thousand dollars back or whatever. Yeah, you should be happy to. You're fucking alive. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sorry, Mike. Now, you, you and I share a common love. Thank you. Yes. Of Jamie Kilstein. I, I love it. You're the only person, too. You know, oh, Stanhope, no, Kurt uh, Metzger is obsessed. Uh, actually, so many comedians are obsessed with him. They tell me not to tell, make it public because they don't want him. They know he'll he's such a fucking douche that he'll yeah. like that. But trust me. Everyone, every fucking green room of every comedy club, when Jamie Kilstein comes up, it's like someone brought in a birthday cake. Yeah, how does not everybody hate him? I don't understand why anybody is is on the side of a Jamie Kilstein. We all hated Jamie Kilstein when we went to high school with him. Right. No, everyone right. hates him. His wife hates him. In fact, I know guys at his dojo who call him the social justice warrior. He's hated even there where he does his fucking chokeouts. Do you like my shirt? I love it. Can we get close on that somehow? Because uh, it's, it's hard to see how it, it, This is his wife. The leprechaun. The leprechaun. It's pretty mean to go after someone's wife. It should be leprechaun. Just ran out. <laughs> I don't know who this person is. <laughs> you know why I put his wife on the T-shirt? Why? 
Because no one wants their wife on a T-shirt. That's fucking horrible. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Could you imagine if somebody put your wife on a T-shirt? Uh, it actually makes me want to just walk out of the room right now in a rage. Um, so, Jamie Kilstein, you caught him cheating. Is that what's going on? I got an email from a listener. We brought up Jamie Kilstein a few weeks ago after he put out the um, catcalling video. Nice cock! Yeah, and uh, a female listener of ours who's been listening for years wrote me an email saying Jamie Kilstein's been hitting on her while he's been um, uh, with his wife, Allison Kilkenny, the leprechaun. Of course, they don't. she didn't uh, take his name when they got married. Uh, now, yeah. this could just be a random email, right? What's that? This could just be a random email someone fucking with him. No, no, this is 100% true, and anybody who doubts it is a Kilstein sympathizer and i will not stand for it so you you are accusing him of being a melissa harris perry i think i don't know who that is but i think kilstein is a is an awful person and we're working round the clock over here to take him down uh and anybody who stands with kilstein uh, might as well be an enemy of mine and they're going to be on the wrong side of history with this one yeah doug stanhope sent me an email this morning a very mean email would you like to hear it yes please Doug Stanhope, you know, we got a new marketing intern and we're sending this Kilstein video I made to everybody Kilstein knows just to embarrass him. And Doug Stanhope uh, wrote back this morning. You want to hear it? Yes, I do. I used to like him. Yeah, me too. Now I hate him. Uh, anyone this worked up about Jamie Kilstein needs real enemies, especially somebody as unwatchable and cartoonish as that douchebag. I lasted two minutes out of sheer horror from that man-cow impressionist. If you and that douchebag are in fact the same person, stop humiliating yourself. He thinks my intern is me, which is very- Sheer funny. horror. Sheer that horror. sounds like the Paris attacks. So Doug Stanhope, I'd like an apology uh, from you uh, within 24 hours or, or, or I'm gonna hate you. Uh, yeah, throw 12 bucks in the mix too. Uh, yeah. I can, wait a minute, I can't believe you're not familiar with Melissa Harris Perry. If you are familiar with the Kilstein canon, one of these louder than Crowder dudes who's wasting my whole life on social justice <laughs> warrioring. By the way, I'd like to take his spot on your show. I'm, I'm much better than him. And I believe that you know that. Who? Uh, louder with Crowder? Louder with Crowder. That guy's weird, right? He's up to something. He's a wonderful guy. He's just very Christian. And I think that throws off some of the more heavy drinkers in the world. But no, he's high quality. Okay. Yeah, love him. No, Melissa Harris Perry is, uh, she's got a show on MSNBC, and she had Jamie uh, Kilstein come on and just cuck himself like a sad little white slave where he sang the white boy blues and her and her black friend laughed at him. Yes. Uh, and who's that black woman who sang the white boy blues with him? Oh, my God. Can we get that up while while Mike is still on the line? Is that you possible? You have to see this stuff. Jamie Kilstein's stuff is some of the, the best stuff. Now, you, my guests here aren't familiar with Jamie. No. It's like it's like Windy City Heat. It's like the Perry Project. Once you dip your toes into this guy, you, it creates a vacuum, and you will never best. get out. I have seen I, I have seen part of the video of the, uh, the catcalling. Oh, yeah? He made it. See, he flips it, and it's yeah, yeah. women catcalling men. But I mean, the, it's a nice cock, and I was done. The, the unfortunate thing about it for Jamie is you're watching it, and it sounds like utopia. Women screaming obscenities about your genitals? Yes, please. I would have no. every STD in the world uh, before I was finished traversing the block. <laughs> I want to get back. You made a, a perfect point earlier about him being, you know, and I've been saying this the whole time, these guys don't become feminists uh, for any other reason than other than guys didn't like them growing up. They were faggoty. Like, Jamie Kilstein is a tiny little faggoty kid that you would hate in high yep. school. She but I knew little guys who were effeminate. They worked around it and they got some stuff done. Sure, sure. Like, that guy who does uh, NPR. Honestly, guys treated Jamie like a faggot uh, his whole life. And and he's got resentment for him. And the wife, the same thing. It's the same thing with the female feminist. They're, I think this is, you know, not just to be mean, but I think this is the real point here. Feminists are fucking ugly. They've been ugly their whole lives. And when you grow up ugly, you're, you're living a completely different life than the non-ugly. Oh, you know? that's a good point. Like they talk about racism and sexism. No one doesn't want Denzel Washington as a neighbor. Sure. But when there's a job interview and the person is just like a two, 
<laughs> and you think, or they have that Santa skin beard that's a big beard but made of flesh. And you think, I don't want to look at this fucking thing every day. I don't care how good they are. Yeah. Get them out of here. His wife grew up in a life where people aren't smiling at her all the time. They're not opening doors. You know, the uncles and the grandfathers aren't saying how cute she is because she looks like the fucking leprechaun. So when you're 33, you know, when you finally turn 30, your life is completely different from somebody who's semi-attractive or attractive. And that's got to lead to resentment. Well, you're, I, I mean, you're accidentally like, you're garnering sympathy here for at least the wife no, and no, the no. Jamie. Because I do believe there is a prejudice world here, but it's against the uglies. No, no. I'm saying the ugly are the enemy. Be scared of them. Oh, it's justified. Out. The prejudice is justified. Yeah. Don't <laughs> let them in. The ugly are, yeah. When we Send them back we to where like, they came from. We don't like ugly people for a reason. It's <laughs> built in. You know, when we're kids, nobody says don't like the ugly. We just go, look at this fucking freak. There's something built in. We can sense these are not good people. These uh, people should be eliminated. That, that's an interesting challenge. Let's think of ugly people who are cool. What about well, Ian Jury? Lot, Sex and drugs them, and think, rock and know, roll. Uh, guys can uh, get past it, but girls... They had a disease, though. Oh, okay. yeah. What, what about an ugly girl? Who's a cool, ugly chick? Oh, Rachel Dratt, Dratt from SNL? Yeah. Oh, yeah, she's cool. She's funny. Yeah, I mean, there's no, you know, there's no across the board. <laughs> well, then ugly people are fucking. Come up with dirty. some cool ugly chicks that are super smart. I mean, smart I'm sure and there's. I, I mean, I don't know. Oh. I also, you know, <laughs> the facts are with us. Yeah, <laughs> was, yeah, I think you sorry. nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> it was, okay, let's check out Jamie on Melissa Harris Perry, and just so my guests here can indulge. Yeah. In the wonder that is this fucking self-flagellating loser. Winner, woman on the internet. Oh, no, 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 no. Says something I don't like. He don't like, he don't like. Oh, winner, woman on the internet. Now get to it, Jamie. Oh, no, 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 Says no. something I don't like. Oh, what happens? On the internet. This is John Mayer, isn't it? sandwich but to be honest it's cuz I don't know how to make a sandwich no, he honestly okay that's enough right using his I uh, like his no kids words. guitar from Toys R Us <laughs> so that he doesn't look well you know it's a fun game with with Jamie you take him totally seriously and then try to get through the logic yeah, of his point yeah. and I've done that with that song he's saying that when sexists on the internet say, hey, bitch, go make me a sandwich, they're really saying that because deep down, they don't know how to make a sandwich themselves. Exactly. What? Uh, how does he have the nerve to sing that song on TV? What? That's, it's like he's insane, right? Yes. Yeah, he's just very, very dumb. I think he has like a Down syndrome IQ. Yeah, he, there's something not right. But his wife seems, you know, when you listen to her talk, it's a lot different from... The grim face that you see here. She seems smart enough to know that this would be very icky. How does she deal with Kilstein? I, I don't understand how she thinks what he's doing is okay. He's making a full studio album filled with these songs. Oh, it's out. Yeah, you can get it on iTunes right now. Yeah, Actually, I'm we, getting it right after we get off the phone. <laughs> Uh, thanks for coming on the show, Mike. Let's keep uh, let's keep updated on this because Jamie Kilstein, I just can't get enough of the guy. I would love to, Gavin. Thank you so much. I love you more than a friend. Uh, me too, and you. Mm -hmm. Thanks for getting the important part of uh, how many horribly shitty, good-looking people there are, too. Like who? Like uh, John Mayer, for example. <laughs> like any celebrity. Wait, we don't know John Mayer's a bad guy. Yeah, he's a total fucking douchebag. How do you know? He's a Stevie Ray Vaughan tattoo. That's getting tough to play devil's advocate. Yeah. <laughs> Stevie Ray's got some okay songs. <laughs> some Not of his early answer. shit is okay. I mean, he's better than the Beatles. <laughs> and by the way, Stevie Ray's ugly. He's not very attractive. He's not very attractive. Yeah, that's fair. Neither is Rick O'Case. Uh, listen, I, I'm just saying, you know. Rick O'Case looks pretty hot. No, he is, he is not. He is not good looking. Not early a... Cars days? No, he Rick is Rick O'Case was always ugly. Yeah, he's great, and he's very yeah, talented. He's, yeah. he's Early Rick Ocasek, rat. Maybe when he was he's a little seven. sweet tall glasses and his wig, by the way. Well, it's a wig now. Oh. Was it a wig in the 80s? It might have been. What's his name? 
Oh. <laughs> Rick Ocasek. He produced hey, the Bad Brains record hey, Rat, we were talking Rat. about earlier. Name three Rolling Stones songs. You Can't Make Me. That's a good one. one. Yeah. Close, That's though. A, nope. You Can't Get No, but now you can't use that anymore. Satisfaction. There uh, you go. Wow. Nope. <laughs> wow. Wow. Oh, oh, who were the Sex Pistols? <laughs> <laughs> they did the music, right? Nate, can you name one of the, a song by them? <laughs> no. All right. How about three Beatles songs? I want to hold your hand, let it be. Shit. Shit, that's no, no, right. I know the Beatles. I just can't think of a third. Wow. Off the top of my head. <laughs> Pretty amazing, huh? This, by the way, is a 23-year-old virgin who refused one of the hottest porn stars I've ever seen. Lady Madonna. Mercedes Carrera. Got the oh, yeah, the, oh, yeah. We met her last time we were on. Yeah, he's hey. not interested in her. She's too old. Oh, Lady Madonna. You weren't saying that Madonna's a porn star, were you? <laughs> <laughs> she has done a book of erotica. She has. Yeah. She did do a book of erotica. And uh, he, he Googled that, by the way. That's how he got Lady Madonna. Some good photos of Big Daddy Kane in that book. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Big Daddy's Kane. Big Daddy's Kane. Big Daddy Kane is anti-faggot. That means no homosexuality. <laughs> Isn't that fine? Yes. I also remember him getting out of a bathtub on that stage a... <laughs> in a Speedo. <laughs> right. Hey, you never found us that uh, David Lee Roth clash thing. So, guys, we're winding up to a close here. Okay. I feel like... Um, all right, that's Rick Ocasek now. Look at him. He then, looks though. like Mick Mars. Yeah, he has no a very Mick, he has a Mick Mars thing. Mick Mars syndrome. Mick Mars vibe. It's not bad. That's probably my age. That's a forty-five-year-old. It's not oh. bad. That's not. Come on, you're guy. you're well. You're stretching a little bit. Find '80s Rick, and there we go. No, sorry, bud. Nope. No. Oh, that's a male model. Go back to that first that, one. That could be a male model. It could not be. You're, yes, it could. It could not be. Looks like it's it like a Ryan tennis. McGinley picture right yeah. there of some Lower East Side hunk. It is a Warhol photo. That guy's in the Virgins. That's Donald. <laughs> <laughs> He's gorgeous. Poor Donald. <laughs> Sorry, Donald. Uh, yeah, I feel like we didn't get enough of you because we had Nero do a two-hour answer. No, that's okay. We oh. weren't familiar with Jamie Kilstein. I, I feel exactly the same way Nero does. So. I don't even, yeah. I, do, <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> the quarters of this, I was like, who? What? <laughs> Gamer what? There's a lot going on in the world. We're yeah. fighting for free speech on this show, you see. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah. And so these cases become, once you start peeling back the onion, you see, wait a minute, there's someone getting fucking fired every day. But wait, you're fighting for free speech against that guy who sings those weird songs? <laughs> no, that's different. That's you just, just don't like fun. that guy. Okay, like okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Although, I'll tell you what. If you that got guy's obsession with him seems... I don't know what the story is, but that guy's obsession with the guy you don't like seems a little weird. Really? Like, it seems... Uh, well, then I'm weird, too. You, I am obsessed with him. Everyone is He's obsessed. Like, making a t-shirt of his wife? Yeah, that's pretty rich. But he makes t-shirts... Like, he has a t-shirt of the picture Anthony Cumia took when he got beat up by that tranny. Why? <laughs> Funny. Let's do that. Can we go back to that uh, <laughs> to that cat calling thing Jamie made? Yeah, this I've the logic seen, in it is wonderful. I've seen like a certain part of it. It, it. In this world, right, he where he flips, you flip it back, and it's sort of like Google Translate when you go French to English, then English back to French. In his world, right, the woman getting cat called runs away, runs onto the bus, cowering, and then on the bus. Some dude heard her getting catcalled, and then he starts hitting on her, mm -hmm. which is unfathomable. Where are you running? I have more, more questions about the backup band than I do. Yeah. Well, that's got the whole album they do. The guy runs away. So the chick as runs away. Do. As most women do. On a subway or a train, a bus. It feels safe, right? Can't get street Wait, harassed. She ran onto the subway. This guy overheard the cat call that was up on the street. He looks across from him and what is he's he got seeing? good ears. Another creepy ass woman. Stare him right at him. She comes over. Men don't do that on the train. Hey, handsome. <clears throat> Saw what happened out there. This guy's a sick bass player, though. Is, bothering you? is that fretless? It don't sounds like it. No. <laughs> He's made a he's made a fretted bass sound fretless. It's, it's <laughs> Jack of the He's yeah. added like six strings to it somehow. You need a big strong lady with big strong lady arms to protect you. Is he talking about the fifties? Like <laughs> big strong lady, yeah. strong lady arms. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I remember that, that song. No, that, that, that seven inch was really their yeah, first seven inch. That was, that was the Everly Brothers, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> 
Yeah. When was the last time a man said, you need these big, strong man arms? Maybe like a weird I mean, I've never said Czech it. immigrant. <laughs> you would need the big, strong man arms if he was shit-facing. I wouldn't point. Vin Diesel came to pick up his paycheck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm spitballing. Big, strong man arms. Yeah, I don't understand that at all. That's supposed to be some kind of like Andy Kaufman, like, joke on is that what it is it's yeah but even like then a, if it was not, not. if it was a prank you go well that's too broad uh, you're overdoing it dude oh uh, okay so he's sincere he's totally yeah. sincere. is that band worse or better than the beatles <laughs> that band's worse than the beatles that's how okay. shitty right, you are. win yeah you won that worse than the fucking beatles uh guys i would love to thank you for coming by thanks for having us you're having us of the imminent do, do you want the van halen yeah, just oh, you real, finally just got it. I'd given up on you. Just real quick. This is a Native American it's cool. thing I like that, that. that represents I like that. white people. When the band oh, yeah? gets to have a drink white pride. right here. All right, <laughs> This is back when they filmed concerts with pinhole cameras. <laughs> it's a Hasselblad. Is everybody having a good time so far? So right? far, so good, Dave. Everyone with your midget butt. Gay, Jewish, and high on cocaine. <laughs> That's every girl I've fucked in New York. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good band name, too. <laughs> well, there was the Jewish. Oh, watching me, I'm going to drink. Boom. Oh, oh, this my. is when, basically, they're sending him Great. into a coma, yeah. <laughs> Kill the midget. Drinking alcohol! Doesn't that make you want to have a drink? Everything does. I want to take this time to say that this is real whiskey here. The only people who put iced tea in Jack Daniels bottles is the Clash, baby! <laughs> Way to drive home that final point. Yeah. Eh? Well, he's a consummate performer. Yeah. <laughs> Folks, thanks for tuning in to the Gavin McKinnis Show. Thanks to my two wonderful Jays and my week-long Canadian co-host, Mike Ward. I hope we learned a lot today, which is sex is weird. I like you more than a friend. Peace out. <laughs>